We present Midas Touch, Monte Carlo inference over distributions across sliding touch for Corel 2022. I'm Sudarshan Suresh, a PhD student at Carnegie Mellon University's Robotics Institute, and this work was in collaboration with Zilin C and Michael Case at CMU, along with Stuart Anderson and Mustafa Mukadam at Meta AI. In this work, we look at the problem of tracking a robot finger interacting with an a priori known object to achieve robot finger localization. Consider the case of sliding along the YCB bleach cleanser object with vision-based tactile sensor, such as the digit. Alongside this, on the left, we have the average pose error over time and the image feed of the interaction. We start with little to no knowledge of initial pose and quickly reduce uncertainty upon encountering salient features. The only inputs to this pipeline are tactile images and noisy sensor poses that can be usually obtained from kinematics in a manipulation problem. At a high level, Midas Touch uses 3D surface geometry from tactile images, summarizes these compactly, and disambiguates them over time with a particle filter. We'll first take a step back to motivate the problem. Robotics researchers are not averse to contact anymore. In fact, they embrace it. The community isn't just doing pick and place. They're sliding, grasping, bumping, and gating across these objects. And there's a large amount of information at the distal end of these robot arms that is underutilized for pose estimation tasks. Getting this finger object relative pose is vital for closing the loop for downstream tasks for which pose information is required. Examples of these are downstream planners, and state-based policies and controllers. While our method is evaluated for a single finger's interaction, it can be extended to multi-finger problems and can benefit from concurrent contacts. During interaction, vision-based state estimation may not suffice due to self-occlusion from the robot or occlusion from clutter. Our method can benefit robots in environments like households and warehouses with known object models. Over the past decade, robotics has been dominated by tactile sensing solutions. These have been specifically designed to maximize the amount of information that we can get from these interactions. The geometries that they perceive can serve as valuable information for pose estimation or place recognition. For example, if you detect an edge, you can reason about where you might be on an object's surface, and more importantly, where you might not be. Tactile simulators like Tacto and Taxim allow us to generate large corpus of data. This can enable both prototyping and learning measurement models that transfer to real world interactions. The tactile perception problem can be viewed through the lens of a slime problem. Robot proprioception gives us a geometry, just as encoders do in mobile robots. Visual measurements can be derived from vision-based touch However, these tactile images lack global context, unlike the visual counterparts. And finally, our reconstruction goals can be compared against object meshes, similar to floor plans in mobile robots lab. Succinctly put, given a stream of tactile data from a robot finger, can we figure out where we are on the object surface? Initial methods focus on particle filtering for discrete contacts, for example, the work of the manifold particle filters by Kuval and others. Other work focused on localization synergies between vision and touch, which is out of the scope of this work. Vision-based touch gives rich tactile signal for single touch localization of small parts. The local tracking problem was also explored using the digit and the soft bubble sensor using frame-to-frame -frame methods like ICP or learned measurement models. Gao and others demonstrated multimodal fusion of touch and audio for small sequences. And category-specific localization of objects was demonstrated with vision-based touch. Our work is close to that of Bauza and Gao, but instead reasons over long temporal streams of tactile data for larger objects, such as the YCB object dataset. Given finger object interactions and a resulting tactile stream, the first step in this process 
is the image to 3D estimation to capture tactile geometries. Vision-based tactile sensors perceive contact geometries as images. The soft, illuminated gel pad deforms elastically on contact and is captured by an embedded camera. The success of supervised learning of RGB data motivates us to extend this towards tactile images. With realistic tactile simulation, we can scale supervised learning to a wide range of objects and ground truth. Thus, for say a class of 4D by CB objects, we can randomly densely sample tactile images. We further have access to the ground truth height maps. Supervising for reconstruction loss, we learn a mapping from images to 3D. Here we can see some semi-real generalization results for digit interactions on YCB objects, where we see good generalization of image to height maps and characteristic features captured. Next in the pipeline, we want to condense the point cloud into a compact embedding that we can use for place recognition. This is similar to the loop closure or point cloud retrieval problem in SLAM. Similar geometric features should give us similar latent embeddings. Just as point cloud retrieval methods in the LiDAR domain, we do sparse 3D convolution on geometries and generate compact embeddings. We use pre-trained models trained on contrastive loss for LiDAR data and further fine-tune them on data from a tactile simulator. Thus, when given an edge, we can get a closest match edge that has a lower cosine distance score. Here we visualize the TSNE color map of the embeddings when densely sampled on objects. Similar hues here represent poses that capture similar tactile geometries, such as edges here. For example, given the query and resultant images on the right, the highest score candidates by cosine distance match those of the query. When looking at the TSNE embeddings, we can see that we can delineate local geometry features, such as the edges on the sugar box, ridges on the power drill, corners on the scissors, and even the threads of the baseball. This is quantitatively shown a single touch pose error where we sample 50K touches for each YCB object and get the top 25 high scores from a pre-built dictionary of interactions. We then plot the distribution of the minimum pose error with respect to ground truth, normalized with respect to random touch. We observe tools with salient geometries to be easier to localize versus objects that exhibit symmetry, which are less distinct. These learned embeddings can now be matched up against a pre-generated dictionary for each object. The cosine distance between the embeddings serves as a likelihood score. The final part is using this measurement model, along with sensor pose information in a particle filter. This gives us downstream tracking over time that we can normally run at 10 to 15 hertz. The particle filter resembles those in mobile robot literature with update and resampling steps. In our case, the noisy sensor poses propagate the particle filter forward while they are resampled based on the TCN embedding scores. This rounds out the entire pipeline of Midas Touch. We evaluate this method in our collected YCB slide dataset. This consists of 500 simulated and real world trajectories over 10 YCB objects with ground truth by contours tracking. You can access the complete dataset at the link above. Here are examples of the simulated trajectories and the real world ones, along with the sensed tactile geometries in green. The simulated trajectories are generated at random for a fixed geodesic distance on the surface, while the real world ones are collected by a human operator as previously shown.
With Midas Touch, we can track an evolving distribution of post candidates on an object. Here we can see the ground truth sensor trajectory, the pose, the pose particles on the object, and the global sensor likelihood as a heat map, along with the tactile images and the 3D geometry we derive. Here's an example of it in action as I interact with the YCB sugar box object. We can see that from a multimodal distribution, we can converge to the true mode via salient geometries. Here's another example, this time from the tactile simulator on a power drill object, where we can quickly converge to the trajectory and it becomes a local tracking problem after that. It's an interesting example from simulation that shows how we can capture multimodal distributions. For a symmetric object like the mustard bottle, we end up with two antipodal pose candidates. We believe capturing these symmetries are important for downstream applications. Here is another simulation example with the baseball, with the threads of the baseball acting as a useful localization cue in an otherwise hard localization problem. Finally, here's the real world result of the sensor traveling along the rim of the mug object. For completeness, here are some final pose error trends. What you would like to observe is decrease in error by magnitude compared to the initial one. In our release code, we have scripts for running minus touch on simulated and real world trajectories from our YCV slide dataset, along with live interaction. For example, here is a sensor interacting with the sugar box object. We can see represented here are the particles, the clusters, along with the tactile heat maps that we generate, and the image to 3D conversions. You can also try to visualize these embeddings yourself with the digit and our live demo script. Here, for example, I touch different parts of the mug object and see how the geometry result in different embedding spreads on the heat map. A method may be brittle when it comes to object symmetries and may fail in the lack of discernible geometry. In future work, we wish to add differentiability to the filter to learn from real world data. We wish to relax the known pose assumption for generalized 3D objects and build object models on the fly. And finally, we wish to add more contacts to the mix for multi-contact configurations for in-hand type problems. Thank you for watching our presentation.